We are Wyatt and Lindsay. In our last video, we climbed a 6,000 meter mountain named Huayna Potosi in Bolivia. Since then, we have spent some time living and editing videos in Chile and Argentina. On April 21st, we flew back home to Ontario, Canada after living in Latin America for the past eight months. While at home, we celebrated my 28th birthday, filed our taxes, and spent some much needed quality time with our friends. Welcome to our friend Melissa's house in Canada. We've been here for the past almost three weeks. I just took my daily morning cold shower, something that really helps ground me in the present moment at the start of every day and something that I totally recommend to anybody who'd like to try it. And tonight, we're flying to London, England. Hello. <laughs> okay, you stay here. I'll be back later. It is uh, 9.02 a.m. I've been up for a few hours doing yoga. We're headed to London later today. This marks the end of our stay in Canada. It's been such a great time. I'm really actually sad that we're leaving. I kind of wish we were staying longer, like another couple weeks. There you go. That was pretty good. Do it again. Time to get packed up. I'm coming, I'm coming. One second. Our friend's mom is having us over for dinner, so we're gonna get packed up now and head over there to get some pasta in us before we head off to the airport. This is adorable. There's another one in the cage over there. Hello. Would you like some kale? Aww. Oh, his heart is like. Tum, 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 tum. Oh. Oh. Okay, I'm ready. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Okay, this will be fun. Ready? <laughs> oh. Tell me what's happening. Melissa, yours is we are crazy. at Melissa's uh, mom's house, and Elaine has made us dinner. So you're coming, right? Yep. <laughs> just leave, leave Wanda here. Yeah, we'll just leave Wanda here. <laughs> I feel like I know what I'm doing this time. Last time Melissa took us to an airport, seven months ago, it did not feel like we had any clue. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is exciting, I'm hyped. I'm crossing the pond for the first time. This is a nice llama sweater you got here. This is my new llama sweater. I stole it from somebody. This is my Bolivian llama sweater. Nope, it's not mine. It's so soft though. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's so nice. <laughs> so for this flight from Toronto, Canada to London, England, we only paid 60 Canadian dollars each because I saved up for the whole entire time we were in Latin America, all seven months, a ton of aeroplan points. We just landed in London. I'm excited, but also very, very tired. We arrived at Heathrow. <laughs> We're going to get our baggage. Definitely feels like 2 a.m., doesn't it? Yeah, I'm literally sitting here fighting, falling asleep. All right, well, let's get moving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You'll feel better. to Cambridge. My brother's pulling up right now and then we're off to his place where we're going to be staying for the next week. Hey Chris. Hello. What's going on dude? Hey. It's been a few days since 
arriving here in the, the town of Yelling, outside of Cambridge. We have been mostly editing. It's been really nice. Cameras have been off. We've just been hanging out with my brother and his girlfriend, Danielle. Today we're going to be going into the town of Cambridge and exploring. We are here. So we'll go up here and fly a drone. This one's actually open. Hello. Hello, me. Look, it's literally a telephone. There's a dial tone. Like, I could call somebody right now. Should we call someone? We, do you know a UK phone number? Should we call Chris? <laughs> <laughs> the bells at St. Mary's Church are ringing right now. Come on, we're walking past the sign that says Cock's Edge. Have you a chuckle? So we're now headed into the Fitzwilliam Museum. And I'm not allowed to wear my backpack. I have to carry it like this. I don't know why, but huh. that's what the man said. So let's go. We've just come out of the museum and it's all lovely and sunny out now. And it feels like a completely different place with the sun out. We've just come to another museum now. This one is the Zoology Museum. Chris and Danielle have really talked this place up, so I'm pretty excited to see what they have inside. Also, it's in the David Attenborough building, which is so cool. I didn't realize that he was a professor at Cambridge. Oh, fair. What are you doing? There's jellyfish on the ceiling. <laughs> These are Darwin's actual finches. What? Really? These are the ones from the Galapagos Islands. Whoa. Had we gone to the Galapagos when we were in Ecuador, this would be so full circle for us. Yeah. But we did not, because it's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. These are all Darwin specimens too. Look at them. Wow. That is so cool. What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Yeah. Duck. Knew it. Chris, what's your favorite animal? Pangolin. Really? Yeah, he's always loved the pangolin. You just vibe with that? Yeah, they're nice. Bus. We left Cambridge, it's like 7 a.m. and we're headed to London, downtown. I am extra excited to go to London because later today we are meeting up with one of my best friends in my whole entire life who I have not seen in person in five years. The last time I saw her she came to visit me in Toronto and it was May of like 2018. So it's gonna be a really epic reunion. We are off the bus, we're walking the streets of London, got our packs on us, and we're headed to Buckingham Palace. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm starting to notice some security, so I think we're getting close. So right behind me is the Buckingham Palace. As we came around the corner though, I realized that the, the guards with the red jackets and the fuzzy hats, they don't actually stand outside, they stand inside the gate. So like you can see them from a distance, but you cannot actually go up to them and try to make them laugh like Mary-Kate and Ashley led me to believe as a kid. We have all of 
our bags with us right now, which is gonna make further sightseeing really difficult because it's a lot to carry around the city. I think the plan after Buckingham now is to head to a coffee shop where we're going to do some editing and some work for most of the day. And then we're gonna be headed from there to a hostel where we can drop off our stuff before going out for dinner with Alexia. We checked into our hostel, sort of rested a little bit, got a free pizza upon check-in, which was cool, because they had this wheel that you could spin where you get like little prizes. So we ate our free pizza, and then I went to book our flight for like the next leg of this journey. And we encountered some problems trying to book it with my aeroplan point. So we had to call Air Canada, and I ended up being on hold with them for like an hour. So that basically ate up all of our free time between checking into the hostel and going to meet Alexia. So now we're on a random street in London, headed to dinner, and we're only five minutes from the restaurant. We had the most amazing evening, went and saw Alexia, got a crazy, crazy delicious dinner. And then after that, we went out and like walked through the city. We basically just walked around like for hours. And I still cannot get over at how breathtaking this city is. Like London is the most gorgeous place I've ever been. And then Alexia says to us, wait till you see Vienna. Yo, and here's the crazy part. In literally two days, we're gonna be in Vienna. Oh yeah, that's true. So yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I've only known North American cities and I just had this like interpretation of what a city is and now I'm like wow Europe's crazy so far crazy Good morning welcome to exploring London day two we've come to Russell Square just a few blocks from our hostel. On the way, we stopped at a Sainsbury and grabbed some yogurt, which we're filling up with this bag of granola and enjoying a quick little brekkie. Okay, so Chris told us that this museum is absolutely massive and it's literally like impossible to see the whole thing in one day. So we need to pick and choose what it is we wanna see. The thing I'm most interested in is Egypt. Oh my God, dude, these are canopic jars and they literally still have like his organs inside. Like you can see this one. That's like his brain. And whatever other organs they took out of you that they didn't think were important. We're in a section right now of um, ancient British stuff. Here's some like little farm tools, little snips for sheep. So this is like an iron structure that's called a fire dog. And basically you put it over your fire in your little hut and you can spit roast meat on it. It's from 50 BC, so it's over 2000 years old. So they would all just live in here in this thing called a roundhouse with a fire thing in the center. And then they would just like do everything. They would just like sleep, eat, cook, whatever inside this little hut. Are you enjoying your day at the museum? Yeah, I am. I am. Thank you for, for coming with me. I'll take my kiss now. Thank you. You can have two if you want. So this room, this whole like gallery section is pretty interesting. It's called Enlightenment. And basically it shows how the British Museum would have been laid out in like the 1700s when they like first were finding everything all over the world and bringing it and like collating this information and trying to put together like a perspective of the whole world essentially. The craziest part about this museum is that as much as they have on display up here, they have 10 times as much just categorized in the basement. It's like the scene from Indiana Jones at the end where they just like take each artifact from those movies and just, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't think I do. What, what uh, Indiana Jones? I'll put it on screen for the viewers. This is an orary or a mechanical model of the solar system. 
They basically used this as a teaching tool for astronomy. And something really interesting that they used it for was horoscopes. Because it basically shows where the planets are in relation to the different signs all the way around. So like if like Jupiter is in Taurus or if Saturn is in, I don't know, Pisces, for example. Jupiter is in Taurus right now. You just nailed that. <gasps> That's probably why I was in my mind. Yeah. Oh, and something really interesting too. They actually didn't have Uranus or Neptune on it. So they didn't know about those planets yet when that was made. Stone. This is like a super, super famous uh, piece of, I guess, rock or granite that has the same inscription in three different languages. It has Greek, Demotic, and Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. And basically the Rosetta Stone was the key to unlocking Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs because up until this point, nobody could figure out what it meant. But because the Greek, which we could read, said that the Rosetta Stone included the same text in three different languages, we were able to compare the two and figure out slowly over time what the Egyptian language meant. Our day at the museum has come to an end. It's pretty loud and chaotic out here, but we finally reached Westminster Abbey and Big Ben. Big Ben's going on! Every hour, I guess, huh? I can't believe we're actually here. It's like a place you hear, you hear about all your life. You know, like, Big Ben is the clock tower in London, blah, blah, blah. And now suddenly, like, we're standing in front of it. So cool. Behind me is Big Ben and the River Thames. It's unbelievable standing here right now. Wait, wait, wait. Does that say Uber boat? Yeah, dude. Uber's got boats on the River Thames? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so right over there is what they're calling like the COVID memorial wall. Basically over 200,000 people died of COVID in London and there's a heart on this wall for all of them. Thank you to our Patreon family who make videos like this one possible. If you enjoyed this video and you want to watch our travel adventure from the very beginning, you can press the playlist on your screen right now.